Section 16 of Ruth of Boston. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Ruth of Boston, a story of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, by James Otis. Section 16 The Murder of John Oldham. It was six years after we had come to live in Boston that a most terrible crime was committed by the savages of the Narragansett tribe, for then they killed Captain John Oldham and three other men who were sailing on Long Island Sound. The vessel was taken by the Indians after they had murdered all on board, and we in Boston were moved to great fear, believing the brown men around us were making ready to murder the white people. Sir Harry Vane, the governor, sent five of our chief men to the head savage of the Narragansett tribe to inquire into the matter, and these messengers were told that none save the Indians living on Block Island had any hand in the matter. Then it was that Governor Vane commanded Master Endicott of Salem to take a large number of fighting men in three vessels and punish the murderers as they deserved. Master Endicott did according to the command, but when he was come to Block Island, the brown people had run away. Therefore all he could do was to burn the huts, destroy the canoes, and shoot the dogs that were prowling around the deserted village. This Master Endicott did not believe was punishment enough for what had been done. Therefore he crossed over to the mainland, where the Indians who called themselves Pequots lived and there he killed more than twenty of these people, besides seizing their corn. He also burned, or destroyed in some other way, all the goods belonging to the savages that he could find, and then came back to Boston, where the people of the town turned out to give him a noble welcome. We had a Thanksgiving day because of what had been done, and believed, or at least Susan and I did, that we need fear nothing more from the savages, for surely the brown people would not dare molest any white man after being so severely punished. SAVAGES ON THE WARPATH It was not many days, however, before word was brought to Boston that the Pequot Indians were trying to coax the Narragansett savages to join them in killing every Englishman that could be found in the land. Father had said that this might be done, if the brown people all over the country should come together, and we, who lived in Boston and Salem, were in great fear. The soldiers were called together from every village, the gates of the fort on the neck were kept closed, with men stationed there night and day, to see that no enemy came through, and the preachers prayed most fervently that our lives might be spared because of our doing our utmost to serve God, as He would have us. Then it was that the Lord heard our prayers, else had we all been killed, and it was brought about in a way such as my mother said, heaped coals of fire upon our heads. The same Master Roger Williams, who had been driven out into the wilderness, because of holding a belief contrary to ours, and who had lived with the Narragansett Indians since then, so pleaded with the savages of the tribe, that they sent some of their chief people to Boston with promises of friendliness. Sir Harry Vane received the visitors with great state. All our soldiers were paraded through the streets, and in front of the governor's house. The drummers marched to and fro, making music, and the people came out on the streets, that the Indians might believe we had not been afraid. It was much like training day, save that only the magistrates of the town were allowed to know what was being done in the governor's house, after the savages had gone into the building, decked out in a brave array of feathers, and in clothing embroidered with fanciful colored quills of porcupines, and with their face painted in a most hideous fashion. We were told, after the Indians had marched out of the town, near to sunset, one behind the other in a manner as solemn as if they were coming from church, that the tribe of Narragansett savages had promised to aid us white people, against the brown men of the Pequot tribe, in every way possible, and greatly did we rejoice that night, for it seemed as if all trouble had passed. Pequot Indians 
The Englishmen who had settled in the colony, known as Connecticut, soon found that the Pequot savages could do much of wickedness, even though the Narragansetts had said they would be friends with the white people. For within a very short time, after Master Roger Williams had sent the Indians to us in peace, did a season of murder begin. Because of my being a girl, who is not supposed to understand affairs of state, and who could only cower in fear and trembling by the side of her mother, when word was brought of the dreadful deeds done by the Pequot savages, I shall not set down anything whatsoever concerning that terrible winter." when we heard nothing save stories of blood and direst suffering. No one could say whether, despite all Master Roger Williams might be able to do, the savages near about would not fall upon us of Boston, as they had upon the white people of Connecticut, and therefore, as soon as the shadows of evening had begun to gather, we girls sought the protection of our mothers. Seated before the roaring fires, not daring to move about the house, even after the doors and shutters were securely barred, we started in alarm at every sound, hearing in the roaring of the wind or the crackling of the fire some token that the brown people were skulking about, striving to get inside, that they might shed our blood. It was far worse than the time of the famine, for then we knew just what might come to us, and if death entered the house, we would meet it in the arms of those we loved. But from all which had been told by those affrighted people who came to us from Connecticut, we realized that horrors, such as could not even be imagined, would be upon us with the coming of those savages who had sworn to make an end of the white settlers in the New World. It is not well even that I set down in words the distress of mind which was ours during that long, dreadful winter. But this I may say in all truth, as the parting word, that nowhere in the Massachusetts Bay Colony could have been found a more distressed or unhappy girl than this same Ruth of Boston. End of section 16 End of Ruth of Boston, A Story of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, by James Otis.